Hello, happy believers. In Mark chapter 7, verses 32 to 37, Jesus heals a man who was deaf and had difficulty speaking. It says they brought to Jesus a man who was deaf and had difficulty speaking. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. Taking him aside by himself, away from the crowd, he put his fingers into the man's ears. And after spitting, he touched the man's tongue with the saliva. And looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to the man, Ephatha, which means be opened and released. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he began speaking plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them, the more widely they continued to proclaim it. They were thoroughly astounded and completely overwhelmed, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Reflection Jesus' disciples were well used to seeing miracles by now, but they were always surprised by the variety of miracles. This time, it was someone who was deaf and had difficulty with his speech, and Jesus healed him completely. And again, they were astounded. They knew now that once Jesus touched people, they were instantly healed. So they started to beg Jesus to heal people. Crowds started following Jesus and there was great interest in him. Jesus took him aside from the crowd and healed him. Jesus did not want onlookers or to create a spectacle. Jesus also commanded them not to tell anyone. He did not want to attract attention, maybe for the wrong reasons. Jesus spoke as he looked up to heaven. He sighed deeply and said to the man, Ephatha, which means be opened and released. Jesus sighs deeply, as if in sympathy with the man who could not speak well. And in his sign, Jesus expresses his pain and anguish in his compassion for this man. As he looked up to heaven, as more of a plea to his Father in heaven, as he often looked up to heaven before a miracle happened. And then, the beautiful words, be open and released. And straight away, he was totally healed. The crowd was completely overwhelmed. And as the word suggests, they would have been affected very strongly and would have found it difficult to deal with, being overcome in mind and feelings. Jesus had a huge impact on these people's lives as they would have never experienced the power of God resulting in their life-changing experiences. Miracles before this. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Look, I am standing at the door and knocking. If anyone listens to my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he will eat with me. This reminds me of my local church. Jesus is on the inside knocking, and he is hoping we will open the door from the outside. If we open the door, he will come to us in the Eucharist. Together we will enjoy this meal. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 So, faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is so true. Faith can only increase from hearing scripture, from reading the Bible, 
and meditating on it. Through educating ourselves and evangelizing to others. Romans chapter 10 verses 14 to 17 could not say it any better. How then will they call on him, Jesus, in who they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him, Jesus, of who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching, evangelizing? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, Who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So faith does not come from what we as individuals say. It can only come from people hearing the word of God, scripture in the Bible. It can only come from individuals speaking the word of God to others through evangelization. In the last book of the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 13, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. John wrote to seven churches, given to him by an angel. And one church in Laceo, the message is about people neither being hot nor cold with their faith, only being lukewarm. And that is why we need to ask ourselves today, is our faith only lukewarm? Which is useless? Have we given a yes to our faith, a commitment to spreading the good news of the Gospels, to create a better world for the future generations, especially our children. Just like the deaf and mute men and all the wonderful miracles in the Bible, Jesus transforms lives and continues to do so through his words and the Eucharist. These are a witness to those who believe in Jesus as their Saviour. Equally, it demonstrates people who refuse to believe how they are missing out on experiencing the power of God in their lives. Not realising it is only Jesus who can save us from ourselves and the world. Without Jesus, we can only live with the consequences of unbelief and separation from God, which is hell on earth, where we could be experiencing more of heaven on earth. But as always, the choice is ours. The following is an excerpt from Revelations chapter 3, verses 14 to 22 about being lukewarm. To the angel, divine messenger of the church, in Laodicea, write, Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the trusted and faithful and true witness, the beginning and origin of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold invigorating, refreshing, nor hot, healing, therapeutic. I wish that you were cold or hot, so because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust, because you say, I am rich and have prospered and grown wealthy 
and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, without hope and in great need. I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot and refined by fire, so that you may become truly rich. And white clothes representing righteousness, to clothe yourself so that the shame of your nakedness will not be seen. And healing salve, to put on your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I dearly and tenderly love, I rebuke and discipline, showing them their faults and instructing them. So be enthusiastic and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behaviour. Seek God's will. Behold, I stand at the door of the church and continually knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. Restore him and he with me. He who overcomes the world through believing that Jesus is the Son of God, I will grant to him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. Please like, subscribe and share so we can all live our wonderful Catholic faith together in all its richness. Next painting, very, very soon. Watch this space. Until then, remember, make your choice.